All right, I'm going to look at another example of Emacs and GPTEL. GPTEL is an ELISP in implementation of using ChatGPT, Anthropic, Gemini, whatever your favorite large language model is in Emacs. And we're going to uh, explore some data analysis today where I'll show you how I think about using these tools and different ways you might consider it. So we'll look at this data analysis. Here is uh, some, some data. This is the, the data from a chemical reaction where we've measured the concentration of, say, species A as a function of time. And usually we want to analyze this to figure out what is a rate law. Uh, is it proportional to concentration of A or proportional to A squared, etc. And uh, usually when we do this, we uh, have learned in a class uh, what some of those rate laws are, and then we'll postulate a rate law and do uh, some analysis. But we're going to uh, see what we can get uh, from Claude uh, in this case. And so let's say, uh, let's just start by analyze the data and suggest a potential rate law. And <clears throat> with GPTEL, I have a Hydra. I love Hydras, so I, I, probably, I type uh, Hyper-G, which is bound to write command for me. And then here I can just press G, and that will send the whole buffer uh, to Claude, and then we'll see what, what comes out of it. All right, so here it is uh, putting in some information. It's checking. It's going to analyze uh, something. It's going to see if the data fits zero order, first order, or second order kinetics. Uh, it's called PyCSE Help. So that is a tool for in an MCP server that, that I wrote with PyCSE that lists all of the functions that are available in PyCSE, which is a, a Python package. Um, then it is aware that if it plots these things, um, you know, we'll see these properties. So it's just automatically kind of doing that. It's extracting the data. Um, it says that it analyzes this data. This is what you expect to see. Calculated rate constant would be approximately 2.6, according to this. Um, and then a potential rate law is KCA. All right, so so if uh, just from asking it to analyze the data, it is suggesting that we use a first order rate law. Okay, that's pretty good, um, and even approximately K equals 2.6. But you should be aware, you know, large language models can make things up, they can hallucinate. Um, they don't really make things up or hallucinate, they can just generate text where it doesn't have a good probability distribution and it generates text anyway. That's what those things mean. So let's, uh, let's see if we can be a little bit more quantitative and do some uh, analysis. Let's suppose we have a first order rate law for the reaction, use, let's say, fit the rate constant to the data using the mole balance. Generate Python code to do that. I want to see Python code that I can actually run that way I know what it did and I don't have to worry about uh, these, these potential hallucinations. And since I'm in org mode, use this code template for the source. So I want to be able to run it with Jupyter Python. So I want it to generate code that looks like this. And then we'll say and replace Python code with the generated code. All right, and so um, now I'm going to put my cursor at the end and send that. So that will just send the things I just typed 
Uh, so now we're going to be able to see where we get NumPy, plot, solve IVP, minimize. It's extracted the data. Probably should check that that is correct. We define a mole balance that is TCA. So it even tells you what we're doing here. And we have a parameter K. Then we have a wrapper function for solve IVP. So it's going to integrate that. Now it's using an objective function to minimize the sum squared errors between the model and the actual data. We have an initial guess. Um, we get minimize that's called using Nelder Mead. That's interesting. Um, that's pretty robust uh, against a lot of, of things. And then we get uh, some k-opt. We'll print some stuff. We'll make a couple of plots. There's quite a lot of code. It's kind of fancy. I, I usually don't put font size and stuff in my own code. We make more plots. It's doing some uh, statistical analysis. It's probably worth going through this. This I recognize, so I like the style here. I recognize this formula, and these look like some of errors. That looks good. Uh, it looks like it makes another plot to verify that it's actually first order. So you'll see two things. One is the raw data and the fit. That should look good. And then the second thing is log CA versus time. That should be linear. And um, then I can just run this. And here's what we see. Verification of first order. Log CA versus time. We get something that does look pretty linear. And it has the K from a linear fit uh, here. And hmm, maybe something, seems like we ought to have more than one plot here. Like what happened to this first plot? Let me try running this again. I think we might see some, uh, we have some kind of uh, Jupiter issues. That happens sometimes, that's in work mode. Um, all right, let's try See if I can just split this. So that one is okay, but something is happening in here. All right, so optimized fine. We've got some uh, things in here. I can fix those. Those are that's from coming from these. Uh, those are escapes that are not what we want. All right. So maybe that is what was causing the the problem before, and I had to manually solve that uh, a little bit here just from. Uh, experience in working with uh, with these. Okay, so not perfect, but I did not have to do a whole lot of modification. Eventually, I, I think I just had to escape these. And now we have actual code that's running. You can see we have uh, what visually looks like a good fit. We found a K of 2.5889. And we found uh, this linear behavior here, which kind of uh, is everything that uh, that we were looking for. So obviously the LLM doesn't do everything for me, but it did quite a lot and it would have taken me a lot of time to type that out. And it's hard to tell how, uh, how lucky we got in this example uh, versus if it was, you know, mixing things up or making up functions that don't exist, etc. But this is sort of my view of, of how this interface might, uh, might look in the future. 
Now, you can do this in something like VS Code or, or some other editor, I'm sure, uh, but I have it uh, working here in, in Emacs. Now, what are some things that I don't love about this so far? Uh, one of them is, is you can't really see very easily what, what is my work and what is the LLM work. Uh, like here, uh, we would need to find some way to change the appearance of this if we wanted it to be like clearly this is LLM generated. And that would be easier if you were using an editor that uh, wasn't plain text, like HTML background or something like that. Uh, it turns out I've, I've tried for many, many years to annotate these in storing text properties, storing overlays. It's very difficult to get persistent uh, and now a persistent markup that would make this very clearly uh, different and obviously that this is the LLM work. Now, and one other reason why that's kind of tricky is you saw the code was LLM generated, but I edited and changed the code. So what would it look like there? Would it, how would you indicate visually that part of it was LLM and part of it was my edits? Uh, that is another challenge in how AI might be integrated uh, in here. So I, I don't think it's insurmountable, but we don't currently have a, a very easy way of managing and storing uh, those kinds of annotations. You either store it in a separate file, which I've done before, but then it's very easy for you to lose uh, and get uh, unsynchronized with that file. You can try to store it in this file, but then it goes either at the top or at the bottom in some uh, difficult uh, to manage way. And in any event, neither one of those are robust to other changes to the file. So, uh, for example, if you change the file with a different editor or through Git or something like that by syncing, then your annotations become out of date and it is not possible to, to keep them perfectly synchronized. So, so at the moment, we don't bother keeping track of those. Uh, because it requires you to adopt a convention that you only ever change the file through Emacs. And if you work with other collaborators, that's just never going to be feasible. Um, otherwise, I, I'm pretty happy with the interface. You type some, some text. You can, uh, you can include links to PDFs or other images. You type a little key command, and it sends uh, stuff off to your LLM and then inserts it back. Uh, there's a little UI thing that bugs me too. Sometimes it takes a while to get the response and it's not always obvious if it's done or if it's still thinking and still waiting. Uh, GPTEL is an asynchronous uh, code, so you keep working and doing what you want uh, while it runs. And then uh, sometimes you see the little message in the bottom querying Claude, but it doesn't always go away when it's done and it goes away if you do anything else. Uh, so that makes it a little bit tricky sometimes to tell if you are waiting for something or or if it's done. Um, that almost certainly is due to the way I'm running it and because I don't use GP tail mode all the time. But it is something to, uh, to be figured out. Uh, usually, like when I run one of these uh, Python blocks, I usually have, it turns yellow while it's running. And so I know as long as it's yellow, it's it's running. Let's see if I, this one takes, doesn't take very much time. So like here, we'll, I'll show you what I mean. Let's just sleep for three seconds. Uh, so it's yellow while it's running. And then uh, once this is done, it, it turns off. That's a very clear uh, signal that, that I should wait. And what, what is running. So maybe one day we'll figure out something like that. Uh, Again, today, that's that's where we are. All right, that's, uh, that is all for uh, what this episode looks like. This was a short example of doing some analysis, letting an LLM, you know, hypothesize if you want or generate ideas for what you might search, and then having it generate code to get a quantitative analysis that you can decide. Uh, we could have done the second order and others and seen that it, that it doesn't fit as well. So... So I think this is uh, very close to what we will do in the future, um, and I look forward to seeing how, how it evolves. Thanks for listening. See you next